We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Spencer. <laughs> Spencer is strictly a two-channel plus subwoofer guy. Hearing us sing the praises of dual subs has him strongly considering adding a second sub to his system, but he has mm. concerns about the best way to set up the second sub correctly to work with Drac Live Stereo. All right. All right, he believes Drac Live Stereo runs a signal sweep on each channel separately and then combined. Currently, a sub is mixed mono in the Mini DSP. If he adds a second sub the same way, he assumes Drac won't be able to perform any magic on his subs. <laughs> individually because they'll both always be playing the signal sweep at the same time and won't be measured individually so should he set the subs up on individual left and right or and and uh or add the second sub mix to mono you want to mix them to mono dude you're that, yeah. doing exactly the right thing yeah you want you want direct first of all you have to level match them yourself yes you will have to do that which you can still use the mini dsp to do yes because the the mini dsp with to rack for a two-channel setup is still two in four out so yes. there's no problem connecting your uh amplifiers for your front left and right speakers and dual subwoofers and it's very flexible in fact that's coming up just in his next question but it's very flexible you can still say that let's say output one is your front left speaker output two is your front right speaker outputs three and four are both subwoofer outputs you can set it up that way yeah, yeah. uh and that's exactly what we tell everybody to do with uh everything yeah, Odyssey, uh, all of it. We we said it send up mono. So, anyways, the Mini DSP has tons of filter options. Is there a definitive best setting for the slope of the filters or some particular combination? Is there a flat? Because <laughs> that's the one I'm looking for. Oh well, <laughs> no. Flat. I mean, I, like you can set. Um... You know, the high pass filter for your speakers, oh, right, the right, low right. pass filter for your subs. Um, so, I mean, generally, like 80 hertz is a very good starting point for the frequency. It doesn't have to be that. It could turn out that some other frequency works better with your particular speakers in your particular room. But 80 hertz is a very good starting point. And a 24 decibel per octave slope works very well for just about everything. That is your classic fourth order Linkwitz Riley crossover scheme. And that works well for just about anything. So you set a high pass filter for your front left and right speakers. You set a low pass filter for both of your subs and your subs should be in mono. So I want to go back a little bit because yeah, there, there's this part where you want to level match the subwoofers. And that's something you can still do manually in the mini DSP, right? So outputs three and four, let's say, are going to be your subwoofer outputs. And you're going to say sum together the left and right audio signals, send those in mono to outputs three and four, but still individually set the level for output three to be different from the level of output four. Everything else is the same. The distances in the EQ are the same. Right but the levels are different. You can still do that in the mini DSP. You'll have to set that manually though. Dirac yeah. is going to be able to set that for you. So that's that's a little bit tricky, but ultimately what you want, because you want Dirac to do the EQ. You don't really want Dirac to try and do uh, distances and levels because it doesn't really do that anyway, right? So distances and levels, you set yourself, right? Then you want Dirac to do the EQ. So you want it to EQ your front left speaker, EQ your front right speaker, and then outputs three and four feeding both of your subs. You want a mono output going to those and direct to EQ those as if it were one sub. That's what you want it to do. Yes. Yeah. But does he really need two subs? <laughs> if he only has one seat. You see, that's what I'm thinking. Not. This sounds like a one seat. It really does. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and my whole thing is I love the idea of you buying a second sub. Don't don't sure. think I don't love that. I think that your bass will sound probably better than it is, does currently. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have taken the time and you have the flexibility in your room to do the subwoofer crawl and get your best possible subwoofer location actually put it there, there's a not zero chance that you're going to set the second subwoofer up and such, you know, set these subwoofers up and go, well, I mean, I think it sounds a little bit better. 
Yeah, I think it, I think it does. What you won't, what you will notice is as you walk around the room, it doesn't sound as horrible as it did before. Or if you have a three seater couch and you happen to sit in all three seats, sometimes yes. you'll notice that from seat to seat to seat, it is much more uniform now with the two subs. You know, that being said, I mean, but if you're only really ever sitting in one chair, you well, we had really that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, but that that fellow who had that whole nice theater, he had two rows of seats. He had Brian from Rhythmic Subwoofers actually come over to his place. They experimented with dual subs versus one. But he's like, I really only care about the middle seat in each row. We did a subwoofer crawl and one sub sounds fine in both of those seats. The other <laughs> seats... They don't sound as good, but I don't care. So, I'll and sit like, there. <laughs> and he's like, I can't justify spending another $1,500 when right. I don't care what the other seats sound like. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's totally reasonable, man. <laughs> I can get behind that. So, yeah, that's a lot of money for something you don't care about. So if you've got one seat in a two-channel setup, yeah, it's it's hard to yes. say that you must have two subs. So, Spencer, this is how yeah. to do it. This is how to do it. Right, right. But I still question whether or not you need to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Look at us. All of our advice. We're so weird this week. <laughs> Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.